Okay, hello Kyriaki. First of all, thank you so much for, for joining and also for um, presenting and sharing your work as part of the Money, Ruins and the Sea exhibition uh, at NIM. Uh, let's just start maybe by um, hearing a little bit of an overview about your creative practice, but also maybe touching on the ideas, themes or topics that inform your work. Hi, Irini. Thank you for having me. And also thank you for the invitation to be part of uh, the exhibition at NIM. Um, I will just start very briefly by describing my practice. So um, it's, um, I'm, I'm focusing uh, on, on themes that have to do with technology and its relation to our everyday life and to the, and to the way that we, um, perceive ourselves, the, the environment, uh, other than human beings. Um, and in this framework, I, I focus um, uh, on, on themes that uh, are connected with surveillance, uh, surveillance capitalism, extractivism, networks and infrastructures, as well as um, human and other than human relations. Um, of course, the work springs from a place that is both personal and political. And by saying that, I mean that uh, it has always up to some, up to some uh, certain extent, a connection with me being born and raised in Athens, in Greece, in, uh, in, in the Mediterranean, and in this uh, meeting point of, uh, of East and West, if you will. So this is also something that informs my, my, my research and my work. Uh, I tend to do extensive research and sometimes also collaborate with uh, people from different disciplines, uh, scholars or scientists or researchers we, uh, who uh, inform also the process of the work. And eventually I create um, multimedia installations uh, quite immersive, uh, which actually um, function as, as a space uh, and time to, uh, to, you know, to discuss and to, to bring up uh, these themes that I'm interested in to, and to discuss, it, to discuss them with the audience. Um, I think that's you know yeah that's a brief way to describing my 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 practice uh yeah and if you want to ask something I that's to, no that's perfect thank you so much yeah that's that's brilliant which brings me and it's a it's a good introduction to the next question which is basically about your uh the work in the exhibition the Aegean data heaven and mm -hmm. how this work shows um uh, a future decentralized network that is composed of like small and sustainable data heaven um, islands in the Aegean, which is from what you were saying, yeah, which, which is actually a counter example to the hierarchical technological infrastructures that we see dominating our world right now and have been dominating our world. So it'd be great to hear what informs uh, the Aegean data heaven and what, what was your interest in developing this, this artwork? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for this question. I Let me just start um, a little bit before before uh, proceeding to describe the work itself and what prompted me to 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 explore this this uh, island and uh, archipelagic infrastructure, uh, there is a, there is a, in my work there is a um, an ongoing interest and an ongoing need to understand this. Um, uh, organisms, let's say, which are like, you know, the big monopolies, uh, tech monopolies, now also energy mo monopolies. So this is something that I have been looking into throughout my practice. Uh, and of course, in this framework, uh, infrastructures and networks are also very important. So uh, the Aegean Data Haven is actually the first work uh, which was um, finalized in 2017, it's actually the first work where I start to discuss these kind of things. And later on with other works, for example, Networks of Trust, which was a year later and it's an ongoing 
uh, installation uh, or for example um, a way of resisting Athens data garden which was a work of 2020 uh, and then the final the, the most uh, latest work the latest work sorry uh, which is called uh, the island um, the mountain islands shelmurnas eternally Dolomites Data Garden, it's a work of this year. So all these works have to do with infrastructures, alternative infrastructures and networks, and also the way that we as digital citizens and citizens in general can confront um, uh, these systems of, of monopolies and these big corporations and what kind of alternatives we may find of course in its work uh, there is another you know um, aspect that i approach there is for example in the last in the two last words that i mentioned the data gardens the main the main um, focus is also on on the relation of big corporation to the to the environment and the uh, the emissions of data economy etc cetera, etc cetera. But in, in the uh, now I'm I, I'm returning to the to, to your question, uh, the Aegean data haven um, springs from uh, from the Aegean archipelago, a, spa a place that is loaded with meaning, both from uh, you know an ancient perspective of uh, you know islands that had uh, been part of a very rich culture and a very rich um, civilization. Through the, through the centuries, uh, but also from a space that has demonstrated uh, a, a specific character of you know, interconnectedness, um, uh, networks, uh, but also isolation. Uh, and at the same time, I have to add the, the, the most recent uh, you know, uh, characteristics of this, of this area that have to do, first of all, with the refugee crisis uh, that has started in 2015, around 2015, but also the extreme touristic exploitation that takes place in this area, uh, especially in the last few years. So this is a work that uh, has, has very many and different uh, inspiration points, let's say, for me, but the main idea remains, you know, this 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 um, question of ownership of data, of ownership of digital memory, of how smaller communities can actually maintain and be able to, you know, to control their 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 digital lives in a way. So this is the the focus here, and of course. I draw on, on, on things that have to do also with the archipelagic infrastructures per se. So that means that islands that, you know, stand both for, uh, uh, for you know, this notion of insularity that implies both autonomy and networks, isolation and connection. So this is for me a very strong inspirational point, let's say. Um, and maybe also very briefly explain here, because sometimes it's not really clear that haven from data haven, haven means port, means a, 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 safe, place, a safe place, a refuge. And in this work and in this specific context, I use the word to describe a refuge for digital memory. That, that's great, actually. And it's... Um... I mean, it's so interesting, like the, the work and has so many, uh, it, it's so rich and there are so many different, uh, you know, connections that you can make from that. And I'm really, yeah, and it's and it's great that you, what you you mentioned about the, uh, the meaning of like, uh, of Haven as well, because this is, it brings me to kind of some thoughts that I had in uh, uh, experiencing your work, but also thinking about the idea of like you know coastal communities and islands and the role of like islands in in terms of economy and trade and going back to the haven i'm thinking also tax havens like offshore <laughs> as well but also um you know strategic uh strategic posts like military outposts for example but thinking about colonialism as well and of course again going back to the haven and the um 
uh, and like the the safety and like yes, and creating that this port of like safety and but also sometimes independence as well. It it brings me to seasteading as well and this kind of you know tendency like of seeing these man-made platforms, but also the how uninhabited islands have been used, for example, or imagined as uh, experimental territories or playgrounds to go outside government control as well. So these are some thoughts of, obviously, I'm not asking you to, you know, to respond to all of these, but what I'm, I'm wondering is like, and you have already touched on this a little bit, but how how does the Aegean data heaven challenge um, maybe uh, established forms of power, of sovereignty and, and geography? So it'd be great to hear a little bit about that. Mm, you are right that there are many layers uh, that they are interconnected when you are discussing islands, right? And um, before I, I proceed to to answer your question, I also want to add this, you know, this notion of the island as a utopia that many people have, and it's very often it's also used, you know, in literature, uh, in, in science fiction as as a place of utopia, which I I prefer not to use it like that because uh, quite the opposite. In this case, I, I, I approach the Aegean uh, in, in this specific work, not as a place of utopia, uh, but rather as a place that has come through uh, decades of, uh, of um, exploitation, of uh, climate urgency, with sea, uh, um, uh, sea levels rising, with uh, a crisis from you know, refugees and people that they are trying to find a refuge from, for political reasons, from also a point of geopolitical interest between two countries, Greece and Turkey. So there is a lot there that actually, for me at least, as a person that lives in Greece, is not at all connected with some kind of utopia. So when I when I bring the islands in this discussion, I I'm, I do that in order to you know to propose another way of uh, of uh, fragmented connection, let's say, because the islands that I mean geogra geographically and geologically speaking, they are spread. Uh, you know, they are fragments of land spread in the sea, but they have to maintain some kind of connection in order to survive. So for me, this fragmented um, network uh, works very well, functions very well as, as a distributed network, also in terms of, you know, internet or, uh, or um, uh, networks in, in, in a digital, uh, in a digital uh, approach, let's say. Uh, and this exactly this um, you know this this um, scheme let's say is for me the one that can probably challenge you know uh, established uh, hierarchies or sovereignty or political uh, ge you know geopolitical interests let's say because this kind of smaller islands that actually also are part of a, of a bigger co cooperative, which is like also the second part of the title of the world. It's the, the Aegean Data Heaven, a cooperative platform in the archipelago. They, through the interconnection and the networking, they try to, you know, to create a distributed organization that actually challenges the way that we until now experience the networks and the cloud, which is like, you know, from um, uh, up to bottom and very centralized. Uh, of course, this is like a fictional work. So I bring together in, in each, you know, there is this website, which supposedly um, uh, is, is the website of this cooperation. And there are the islands, which are member of the, co the cooperation, uh, the co cooperation uh, and in each island, you can, you know, you can enter the the dedicated web page and read about the island and the story of the island. Of course, this is a mix of fiction 
and reality. But in these short descriptions of the island, I also measure, mention things that have to do, you know, with the things that I have already mentioned, uh, like uh, islands, geopolitical um, uh, point of view in the Aegean, exploitation, uh, and also a, a new way of colonialism, which touristic exploitation can be also can be seen also like that, right? Um, so yes, the, the fictional part of the work, which is very present, uh, attempts to challenge these kind of structures and hierarchies, which is again, something that um, preoccupies my work in, in, in several, in, several of, in, in general, and also in, in other uh, installations as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kiryaki, for giving us all these insights into the work. Uh, I hope, uh, you know, people outside the exhibition also have a chance to experience it online or in other places. And yeah, thank you again for your time and for taking part. Thank you, Rimi, for having me and for the nice questions. <laughs>